Poems and Songs in the Lancashire Dialect Part 3 by Samuel Laycock Feet Fair by Samuel Laycock Eh dear, what fowing out there is, it does look bad for sure, when the young at loggy heads with thowed, and the rich at war with poor. Professing Christians quarrel too, MPs get out to square. A pity this, but come me lads, let's everyone feet fair. While toddling through this world of ours, the best on us getting it, and though we'd rather live at pace, we am to fight a bit. There's wrongs one doesn't like to see, we and rights we gonna spare. There's always summat to feet about, but come me lads, feet fair. We and superstition to battle with, how prejudice and all, and we shall find it hardish work, opposing these, I know. Never mind, let's buckle to again, and meet as if they dare, the latter shift the force along, feet fair, me lads, feet fair. There's folk to feet at never land, to aim a gradely blow, they are neither science, skill, nor sense, nor these at worst of all. They'll fire their shots, and when they leap, they neither know nor care. Thou'd fashion way of arguing this, but never mind, feet fair. Well then, these hollow yedded folk, of course they're lots a tongue, at fancy their ideas are right, and other folks are wrong. Let's treat these kindly, pity em, and lay their follies bare. A dose like this may do em good. Let's try it, lads, fate fair. You'll have some roughish feeding to do, and rare had tugs be some, although they know now good or bad, but what they unlearned learned a wom. With weapons these'll bring in field, no doubt they'll make you stare, and then they're all they am to use, they are indeed fate fair. When er is stones in way at truth, and wrong in way a right, to clear the way and see fair play, set to with all your might. But at we reason, tack your time, and have a bit of care. Be firm, and yet be gentle too. Feet fair, me lads, feet fair. Feet fair with everyone you meet, with rich, poor, young and old, and value noble actions more, not either fame or gowd. And lads, as far as in us lies, Let's do what's right and square, and when this fating to be done, let's aim at fating fair. Uncle Dick's Advice to Single Women by Samuel Laycock No doubt it'd look a deal better of me to mind me own work and let the women be, but I'm anxious to give you a bit of advice, for I'm fond on you, bless you, you're looking so nice. We your bonny blue eens set like gems in ye yed. I very near wish that I'd never been wed, but there'd none be much chance if I were no perhaps, for I reckon you're the most on your fitted with chaps. God bless you, you like tender plants, at simp bud. If I'd power to protect you for a danger I would, when the cold winds are blowing to keep you for harm, I'd cover you up well and keep you right warm. And I'd take care that the sun didn't spoil you and all, for I'd nurse you like folk nurses plants for us you Now I want a young woman afore who gets wed to Willie or Albert or Jamie or Ned to try and find out if he's fond of his boots. Never mind what he wears, nor how pretty he looks. Never heed how he brushes and fettles his year. These things are attractive to one, to be sure. But let her forget his fine clothes if who gone, and make sure of one thing, and that is, at John's getting some at cold brains in thin side of his knob. Don't ask if he's getting a watch in his fob. Don't have Matt so much bother respecting his age, nor what he can get in a week as a wage. For there's money a young fella gets plenty of brass, it's never no business to court a young lass. For it's very well known that he's no but a fool. The street corners his chapel and thale house his school. Now a young woman acts very foolish, I think, 
that gets wed to a fellow that's fond of his drink. For who can it expect to be happy, I'm sure? He'll be likely far to be wretched and poor. So lasses, you bargain well while you're agate, and not have to have to think when it's too late. For there's lots of poor downtrodden women, I know, at once were as happy as any of you. When they started a courting, their prospects were bright. Walking out arm in arm with their lovers at night, their minds free for trouble or conquering care, and as women are now building castles in there, never dreaming but what such accomplished young men will be always as loving as what they were then. But men are like women, they sometimes do wrong, and like them too they make too much use of their tongue. It's surprising what nice sounding tales they can tell. I dare say I'd tell money under of myself. Well, lasses, if ever you mean to get wed, prepare yourselves for it. I once heard it said, at a chap down in Slowick, a village close by, as his newly made wife to make potato pie. Now who never had made no such sort in her life? But who told him who'd try like a dutiful wife? So who'd get some patatis, some mutton and stuff, and at first who appeared to get on well enough. But as the tale goes, it seems who went where to out the last, when who come to put crust on, who geek greatly fast, who come for the life on her, get it the reet seas, and wondered why husband should want such like pies who rolled it and pooed it and frabbed a good bit, but whatever who did couldn't get it to fit. At last when who'd done to the way and getting reet stowed, who went to her mother's a piece further up road, and told her what bother who'd had with his pie. Well, come, said the old woman, there's no need to cry. So are thou fast and hast come to thy mother to school. Get a knife and then cut round the edges, that fool. Uncle Dick's Advice to Single Men by Samuel Laycock A single young woman have had some advice. I think it would hardly be fair or look nice if friend Uncle Dick didn't set to again and try to say summat to single young men. Well, as you're well aware, lads, I've been young myself. So into two might be a use, who can tell? I'm known yet a very old fella, it's true. Still I've gone through a deal, a you'll have to go through. Now the bit of advice I have to impart, let me tell you's well meant and comes warm from me heart. For I know very well what it is to be young. I remember the time when I whistled and sung, as I used to be trudging along to me work. As cheerful, as merry, as blithe as a lark. Little thinking at care had overtake me so soon. To mar and put everything right out of tune. But we found while tramping this rough world of ours a great deal of thorns, but a very few flowers. It's weel at it is so. Were this a good shop, we should aim at no better, but want to stop. Well, now we are kindly excuse an old mon. While he's trying to give the best advice that he can. Beware of bad habits. Cigars and strong drink are doing more harm to young folk than they think. I many a time wish our big men had make laws to punish young lads seen with pipes in their jaws. Now isn't it a painful, a humbling seat to witness mere children go smoking through the street? Young lads, if ever you intend to be men, Shun pipes and cigars, never touch em again. I'm sorry to give you pet habits such raps, but smoking and drinking off ruin young chaps. Well, I reckon there's some little courting to be done, some woman's affections a town to be won, and here let me warn you to beware what you do. If you make a bad match, you'll be certain to rue. If that means to get wed, John, look out for a lass, with some brains and good fingers, care not about brass. For if that's all they gets, they'll repent all their life, that they didn't get out of a sensible wife. Now, chaps, don't you be like some that I've seen, 
led away with red cheeks, rosy lips, and blue een. Pretty woman, a very attractive, I know. I'll do for us to look at a bit, but that's all. Now dunna go tellin' it up and down town, that beauty's a thing I want to run down. For a handsome young woman takes the lead, there's no doubt, in all the bonny things that our maggers turned out. What I want you to do, chaps, is this, get some wives, as are likely to wear well and sweeten your lives. That'll love you and comfort you many a long day, when age comes and beauties are faded away. Get some wives that'll have some affection to show, and cling to you firmly in weal and in woe. That's the best sort of beauty at when I go cowed, but sticks to a mon when he's helpless and owd. Well, I'll drop it now, lads. I'm at tender me bant, and I dare say I've said quite as much as you want. I've tried to be both to heart and to yed, and hope you'll be better for the little I've said. Just tap these few hints as they come from me pen, and put em in practice, young fellows, and then, some day, when you find things are working so nice, you'll thank Uncle Dick for his bit of advice. Uncle Dick's Advice to Wed Men by Samuel Lacock what to say to wed fellas, I canna well tell, although I've been wed two or three times myself. It's a awkwardish job, and it's no one very nice to be acting thou uncle and giving advice. But the wed women keep bothering and wanting me to write. If I don't, I know they'll do nowt in a buck flight. My wife's among rest, who kicks up a rare fuss. And says that there's room for improvement in us. Well, I dare say there is. We're no an angels, I know. Now, now, chaps, there's no to that stamp here below. Even women as fair as they happen to be. They're sent into the world without wings, one can see. And it's weal as it is so. For if they could fly, that wife of Tom Brown's would be off up in the sky. And there's more beside her. That had soon disappear, for they're tired of being hampered and kicked about here. Now, why should it be so? Come, chaps, is this reet, and for being reet plain and straight forward to neat? Does thy year, Tom? How is it thou treats with neglect that woman thou promised to love and protect? How is it that greatly with folks out at door, but when thou gets warm, that's a peevish with her. Hey, Tom, if there's out that should love in this life, I'm sure it's your Paul for whom Max a good wife. Why, mon, that's forgetting that morning, I'm sure, when that took her to the altar so fair and so pure, and talk about angels and bonny blue een, to me thinking a prattier lass never was seen. When you set off to the church, bells were ringing so sweet, and the neighbours, God blessed her, went passing down the street, and her father and mother, they mingled their prayers, at that mack a good womb for that dear lamb of theirs. Hast a done so, old bread, now to sort, mon, thou knows, a too suffering just now from thy kicks and thy blows. It were no but last night, they were on at King's Ned, and because who went for thee, and asked thee to go to bed, thou with thy fist, and without even a word, thou knocked her on the pavings, it's true, mon, have ye heard? He, Tom, lad, had either be better than thee, and keep off that mischievous drink, or at sea. A chap and his wed should feel settled in life, stay at home of a neat with his books and his wife, and if it so leaks at these youngsters to nurse, it's his duty to help, for there's nothing looks worse nor a chap to be gadding about out at door, and his wife with the nursing and the work left to her. Now I'm sure it had looked far more monly and fair if we stayed in to help em and did biggest share. I can fancy I hear somebody say, Uncle Dick, I wish you'd stop gabbling and talking so quick. Let's have a word with you. It's all very nice, 
for a chap to be writing and giving advice. But we want a new wife here, no doubt who could tell, how time after time you've been guilty yourself, when again you're inclined to give others a rap, think on, and begin at Jerusalem, old chap. Well, well, lads, a well, for I'm guilty, no doubt, when all bits of failings we're known as bout, even the best of us when we're well polished and bright, when a bear a good sifting nor bring into it late. So let's start a men, let's begin and be good, for our wives would be rarely set up if we would. Let's prove ourselves honest and monly and true, and then women'll try and they'll mend a bit too. The Peers and the People by Samuel Laycock Clear as a ring, lads, and let's have a fate, and we'll soon have it settled who's wrong and who's right. The people at Peers, which is it to be? Let's have a round or two, then we shall see. Must these proud peers take possession at Thelm, and quietly say who's to govern this realm? Are the bees to eat lean, and the drones to eat fat, for ever and ever? We'll see about that. Widen that ring, lads, now up with your sleeves, and we'll soon match short work of these lordlings and thieves. Lancashire lads can march up to their graves, but can never be cowards or traitors or slaves. Comrades and friends, shall we give up for now that freedom for which our brave forefathers fought? Nay, never, so long as these feet are well shod, will either win battle a day upon clod. But why talk a day in, or have only fears, while there's nought in our way but a handful of peers? Let them only feel the tip so our fame wouldn't shoon, and they'll look for a road out of the field, and soon. Clear as a ring then, and let's have a feet, and we'll jolly soon settle who's wrong and who's right. The people are the peers, which is it to be? Let's have a tussle, and we'll shall soon see. Extracts from a Municipal Lay We travel life's journey together, Hope to land in the same peaceful abode, Old childer belonging one feather, Then why should we quarrel on the road? Won't the world be much better to live in, If political strife were suppressed? Could we find in a sparrow so foolish, As to willfully foul its own nest? Are we to be thought any wiser, If we sacrifice God's given powers, To force in a way among brambles, when there's one ready made among flowers. Me head's grey we age and hard thinking, and yet I feel bound to confess that we needn't much trouble to look for what's known as the millennium unless we resolve to put down that bad feeling that must injure both you and us too. How can the lion and the lamb lie together while they quarrel as much as they do? We curse with divisions and parties, split up into sects or a creed, and while we keep fighting these shadows, how on earth can we hope to succeed? The Municipal Elections by Samuel Laycock What? May have a seat in town council? Dear, dear. Why, what earthly use would a rhymes to be there? And even if I went, Unless mayor had good e'en, if I got up to speak, I should never be seen. Besides, what can I know of sewerage and things, or how can an honest man join one at rings, at meeting bar parlours where plots may be laid, disastrous to boroughs and favouring trade? Mr. Councillor Laycock may sound very nice, and a child may be pleased with a paper of spice. But are we quite sure at which acts would be right? Would the child's tender stomach be better for sweet? At any rate, please, to tap notice of this, I shall never be won o'er or betrayed with a kiss. And what about men in our council today? Don't you think some of these will be better away? And should I, who sold tools of pen, paper and ink, turn out any better than these, do you think? At any rate, one thing the electors would find, 
and that is I've gotten no axes to grind, and I won't turn thondle for others a tad, or sacrifice manhood to Tory or Rad, but I'm getting here boasting it's time I should stop, or my neighbours may fancy I'm after a shop, but I'll tell you at once that it's now in my line, spending ratepayers' money on walnuts and wine. True, I might see a wrong where another mon wouldn't, and could creep up a sooth where an alderman couldn't, but at licensing donkeys, as most on you know, well, I couldn't pretend to be in it at all, and as to that matter of stuffing me crop, why, I couldn't find room for a bottle of pop. But if truth must be spoken, I cannot just see how wanking at evils could suit such as me, and one's brains may as well be lapped up in a clout as be bothered with plans that are ne'er carried out. There isn't much fat out of scribbling a verse, but being in town council's a thousand times worse. If one gives up his manhood and forks out his tin, as a bribe to electors to carry him in, I'm stopping a one with me boots and thou lass, and I'll give neither time nor experience nor brass for bubbles that burst on me perishing fame, a top proved disastrous and soil a good name. I shall always be willing to fill up a gap when me neighbours are getting hard up for a chap. But judging back meetings they held till the night, when that day arrives, I'll be gone out to see. What? Another crack poet by Samuel Laker. What? Another crack poet by Mass Jim our lad? I thought we'd enough of this mat. And if thou'll allow me to say what I think, thou deserves a good stick to thy back. I'll tell thee what, lad, thou'll be awfully clemmed, if thou art thinking to live by thy pen. If thou wants to get on, get some porridge and milk, and some good cheese and bread now and then. Now I've had some experience in this macker work. I've been thirty odd year in this school, and what have I managed to learn does to think? Well, I've managed to learn I'm a fool. They'll find that this scribbling's a very poor trade, and they'd get along better by the off if they'd start as a quack with a tapeworm or two, or a few decent pills and some salve. If thou still feels determined to turn out as bad, I'll advise thee to let nobody know, or that'll ruin it to the very last day at thou lives. Thou wish thou'd kept quiet, thou will so. If Betty of Bowser's at bottom at lane, Happens to lose an old favourite cat. Very likely the first body that chances to meet will ask thee to write about that. If a couple get wed or a man licks his wife or some chap in a train steals a kiss, I warrant the first gossip that meets will say, Jim, thou spinners a rhyme about this. They'll be likely to feel a bit flattered at first and think it a stunning good trade. But let me impress just one fact on thy mind. It's this, Jim, thou'll never get paid. If there's any opinion that doesn't just square with those that are out by thy friends, they'll look on thee coolly as if thine a thief and turn thy adrift to laments. If they knows how to flatter and wink at men's wrongs, they may manage to get on very well. But tackle their habits, expose their mean tricks, And thou shun thee as if thou'n the deal. Well, I've told thee me mind, thou can do what thou likes, Go on rhyming, or let it alone. If the latter, thy friends may provide thee a fish, If the former, they'll give thee a stone. And what about selling thy poetry, Jim? Now thou'll find that a job I can tell. If they're treated like other poor Lancashire bards, they'll have to go sell em they sell. How would to like going round with a bag full of books? How would to like to go hawk in thy brains? Or oh, when there's been trying to do some kind act, to be told that's a fool for thy pains? I can tell thee this, Jim, it's a boon twenty years since I was set down as a fool. And though it's a charge that one doesn't like to own, I'm beginning to think that it's true. They stick to reciting that clever at that. In fact, there's few like they ain't land. And both in the pathetic and the humorous vein, 
That reckoned a very good hand, but I'll drop it out, friend, for I'm greatly fagged out, both me brain and me on gin to tire. If thou likes, thou can stick these few lines in thy boot, or if thou prefers it, in fire. Extracts from Poem to a Brother Bard by Samuel Laycock But, Ben, just one word of caution. Don't look for a living in song. If thou's getting a job that brings brass in, stick to it, or else thou'll be wrong. Mon, it's all very well to get on her, for it certainly cheers and elates, but money's a lot more convenient when one's paying his rent and his rates. Now I'm no unwinding yarns off at random, I'm writing about what I know. One may labour for fame and may get it, but it keeps him as poor as a crow. Keep on with thy rhyming, by all means, and that certain a mack in thy mark. But tack an old scribbler's advice, lad, and see thou gets paid for thy work. With thousands of drones drawing pensions, but what a commotion one sees, if some socialist ventures the opinion that none should eat thunny but bees. Well, these are the conditions at present, a lot of things seem out of tune, but we are to known as reformers would alter these matters and soon. We want to see labour rewarded, be it done with hammer or pen, in a school or a shop or a factory, in thirth or on top on it, what then? Why, the paupers that draw these big pensions are sending their tools up and down to tell us that country's in danger. That we're aiming at Bible and crown, but we mean to go on as we have done, keep working and pegging away till the toiler gets the fruits of his labour and the poet gets paid for his lay. Only a Poet by Samuel Laycock Only a poet, a schemer of schemes, a weaver of fancies, a dreamer of dreams, insanely eccentric with long flowing hair, an eye strangely bright with a meaningless stare. Only a poet, that's all now no more, and as everyone knows, often needy and poor, though that little fault may be remedied soon, if the minstrel could always get paid for his tune. Then look what a lot their strange yarns often cost, just fancy five sovereigns for paradise lost. Way, for much less than that, there are thousands of men, would not only lose it, but find it again. Now supposing you bout some good clothes on your back, some beefsteak and onions and out of that mat, these will bring you some comfort and help you to live, but you'll do if you know but what poets can give. Only a poet, a gazer at moon, are soaring aloft in some mental balloon, and some of them winging their way to God's throne and seeming to forget they are no one with their own, where a wife may be cowered in an old tattered gown, very patiently waiting till the husband comes down. Only a poet, a spinner of rhymes, and never caught worshipping dollars and dimes. Only a poet, a star-gazing bard, at met till yet thirst distance from some to a yard, but question him closely on trade or bank shares, and he'll soon show his ignorance by the way at his stairs. Wandering through country lanes all the day long, gabbling strange jargon or crooning some song, penning grand thoughts that may mack a world stare, then D in mad houses like poor John Clare. Only a poet, ah, but what dost thou mean? Being past be a neighbour without being seen, because just across there comes Alderman Stott, and he gets the warm greeting the poor bard should have got. Only a poet is now he can spare. If his feelings are hurt a bit, what need you care? For a poet is no one of much use as a friend, since he now he can give one, nor now he can lend. Only a poet, so let him alone, and if you think fit, you may fling him a bone. He lives on such stuff, bones and old mouldy books, at least one would think so to judge by his looks. You keep out at way on him, folks, for he's sure 
to speak about summat you ain't never yeared on before. He's likely to tell you you and brains in your yed, and a soul that'll live when your body's gone dead. He'll talk about spirit friends hovering around when you know they're asleep fast asleep down at ground. He'll offer to lead you through nature's sweet bowers and bid you admire a grand fruitage and flowers. Very grand and poetical, nice food for kings. Our beings that flutter about as we wings, but one couldn't wheel off her to clothe a bare back, or feel hungry bellies with stuff of that mat. Only a poet like Bloomfield or Burns that may happen amuse you and vex you in turns. Now charming his readers with their thoughts from his pen, thus winning their artless plaudits, and then it may be next minute you're filled with disgust. At some sarcastic hit or some pointed home thrust. Only a poet, what more do you want? Some narrow soul parson to rave and to rant About thetent dimensions and the people in hell Till your fancy a chap must have been there hisself. Yet there are folks in the world that don't think it amiss To pay hundreds a year for such twaddle as this, While others entitled to love and respect are treated too often with scorn and neglect. Only a poet, what more do you crave to sweeten life's journey from cradle to grave? Which is the likeliest, think you, to help us along? An old musty creed or a good hearty song? Starved to Death by Samuel Laycock Starved to death, did you say, dear and me? Why, bless us, wherever in world could it be? Were he somewhere in Greenland, where north winds blow, A rambling up moors and lost in snow? Or were he away in some lonely place, Where the sun seldom shines on a human face? In some far away desert that seldom trod, Where the sod appears fresh from the hands of God? Nay, nay, he had no one starved on a foreign strand, but here a womb in this Christian land, Where the sound of the church-going bell is heard, And charities preached in the name of our Lord, Where the priest and the Levite on luxuries dine, And nobles and statesmen get fuddled with wine. It were here in old England, this queen of the isles, This garden of ours, on which providence smiles. It were here at he deed, in the land of his birth, in the wealthiest city on God's fair earth, starved to death within seat and sound, are the merchant princes a prosper around. Ah, starved to death in a Christian land, e eh dear, this is hard to understand. Your brother and mine lying stiff and cowed in a city of splendour, a mart a gold. Starved to death, the life flung away. God's image starved out a poor vessel of clay. A dear child of somebody's, a brother of ours, With similar feelings and mental powers, Thrown away as if nothing worth, Not one friend to assist him on all God's earth. O oh, brothers and sisters, pray, what can we do? Our thinkers and writers, here's summat for you. Come thunder it out in clarion tones, that we starve in the bees while we pamper the drones. Thunder it out and let it be known, from the pampering workhouse to the queen on her throne. We can boast of our greatness and prowess in war, and our fame as a nation's oft taught of afar. And shall it be true, O old England be said, that her sons and her daughters are starving for bread? Is this what we call feeding the hungry and the dry? Are doing to others as we be done by. Nay, we rather think not, we should think it were queer, If we undying hunger, and nobody come near. While one's living in clover, his friends all around, If he's crushed with misfortune, they're hard to be found. Let us rectify all these sad blunders, and try To be brothers in sorrow, as well as in joy. You that preach Christ's religion, come practice it too. Here's a field for your labour, here's summat to do. Look about on the wayside for some withering flower, 
and give it all help that may lie in your power. Dunna fall into that are wasting your breath in talking to thungry or judgment and death. If you're fishing for souls, you're in a very poor bait. You'll be likely to catch em with summat to eat. We might as well talk to a chap that's known right, and tell folk to walk that's lost the use of their feet, as attempt to feed thungry with orthodox creeds, or quite a stomach with crosses and beads. Let's go on to insult with such simpering cant as to talk about deeing to folks that's in want. Let us act more like Christians and everyone strive to let em have summer to keep em alive. The Pulpit and the Pews by Samuel Laycock Dear, dear, whatever's come in next, it seems some parton's found a text that hints at God Almighty's vexed at thinglish race. And why? Because we haven't the wit to mourn our sins we don't commit. And what's still worse, we haven't seen fit to seek his face. Does the sun air sulk or vent its spleen be blighting every lovely scene because folks don't lift their ain and look at it? Or does it frown on goodly seed and smile on useless tears and weed through jealousy? Not it, indeed. The sun's more wit. It seems God's played on various strings and vainly tried all macker things to get poor folk and even kings to own his power. Well, these aren't things for paltry jokes, or even keen sarcastic strokes. Still the job looks strange to common folks, it does for sure. It's said God plagued the Egyptian kings with sending locusts, lice and things, but persecution seldom brings one nearer God. There's lots of folks to be found in land to grasp or kiss some patriot's hand, but the number's very few that's fond of kissing rod. Another strange suggestion's made, it's this, the Almighty's damaged trade. The chap's making statements I'm afraid he can approve. What nasty fools some men can fling, what serious charges those to bring against a just and righteous king, a God, a love. We know from what in the book appears God's charge with causing sighs and tears and laughing at his children's fears. What fiendish acts! But will this kind of twaddle wash? Can we accept this balderdash or treat such silly drivelling trash as sober facts? God's ruined agriculture too. Do those in pulpit think this true? It sounds like lies to us in pew. It does indeed. There's just one chance for parson yet, if they would have the preaching shops to let. There's one thing sure they'll have to get, a better creed. How the parson knows what God intends, by the wars and plagues it's said he sends, unless they're very chummy friends, I canna say. It's hard to grasp these knotty themes, they crowd one's mind as misty dreams. We know God ne'er lays bare his schemes to such as me. I'm but a feeble earthly worm, what scientists might call a germ, now moulded to a human form, and slightly made. And yet I never feel I'm missed, I needn't raise me puny fist. I can let folk know I still exist, without spoiling trade. Mysterious days are those, and dark, and it may be wrong to map the remark, but to me it looks mere babby work to ruin crops. And this is the ground where the parson stands, and the trash is sent to foreign lands. Why, they wouldn't employ such prentice hands in earthly shops. Well, I know a truck with jealous gods, that prowl about in world with rods, and shut poor devils up in quads, they'll never quit. We want a god that's better drilled, more used to govern folk, more skilled, one less inhuman, less self-willed and shows more wit. If these are pulpit thoughts, try the pews, and let's go in for nobler views, than those we get from thignant of priestly drones. Let darkness flee, make room for leap, instead of crutches, use your feet, and while we've good sound honest meat, why pick up bones? God isn't a fiend inventing pains, a tyrant binding slaves in chains. Nor casting blight in fertile plains, because he's vexed 
No, God is good, we see his powers, In woods and streams, in fields and flowers, This pretty world we live in's ours, And so is next. John Bull and his Tricks A poem about imperialism By Samuel Lego Oh, for shame on thee, John, For shame on thee, John, The murdering old thief that thou art, that a burning disgrace to humanity, mon, Though thou think'st thyself clever and smart. Thou art a beggar for sending out Bibles and beer, And calling it civilization, While thee and thy dear Christian countrymen here Are chatting and lying like Satan. They tap my advice, John, and get a good brush, And sweep well about thy own door, And put the bit of the land at thy stolen to some use, ere thou offers to steal any more, and let thievens be, for there's no need to fear that they're likely to get into hell. My opinion is this: if there's any one near a place of that muck, it's thyself. It's thee at a main, John, thou hypocrite, thou, with thy sundified, sanctified looks. Just to think a top milk comes from the paps of thy cow, Is all the wisdom bound up in thy boots? And what about the mixture of cotton and clay That thou thrusts on thy unwilling neighbours? E John, that's a cure, but thou will catch it some day When there's ended these damnable labours. Thou may well tell the Lord what a wretch thou art, John, For thou pulls a long face on a Sunday. And to prove what thou says, thou does all that thou can, To rob the poor neighbours on Monday. What business hast thou to go batting thy wings, And crowing on other folks midding? Just to think thy black brothers such mean cringing things, As to give up their homes at thy bidding. And thou's the cheek to thank God when thou meets with success, As if he stooped to sanction such work. Now one would a thou at the cunt had done less Than to keep such like actions in dark. If thou means to go on with committing these sins, Sins that'll never get washed out or forgiven, Thou should try to keep matters as quiet as thou can, And ne'er let them know up in heaven. Thou were always a bullhead in best of thy days, And this all thy neighbours must know. And though thou seems pious and pulls a long face, They come honest to see through it all. But when they goes sneaking and tries to cheat God, It strikes me that going too far. I'm no much surprised at thy impudence, John, I'm only surprised how thou da. What business hast thou to be sending out thieves To steal slices off other folks' bread? It would look better on thee to roll up thy sleeves And work for thy living instead. I'll tell thee what, John, and tap notice of this. Thou never knew a nation to thrive, Where the bees prefer feeding to good honest work, They're like drones stealing honey from thive. If thou's the sense of a jackass, Thou'll tarry a home, And keep thine garden in fettle. But thou'd rather be out with thy Bible and gun And robbing some other mon's cattle. Now drop these mean tricks, this contemptible wrong, And behave a bit more like a mon, Or I'll give thee another warm dose before long, For I'm greatly ashamed on thee, John. Life by Samuel Laycock Life's a wearisome journey to travel, a battle with sun and with dust, A terrible fate for existence, For shelter, a drink and a crust. It's a voyage across a wild ocean, Where treacherous winds often blow, And where we may get to at finish, It certainly none of us know. It's a race for a goal that we see not, A conflict with a world and with sin, And the ground being so hard to get o'er, A deal of us have to give in. A game we may all tag a part in, Some failing while others may score. A play, and we're every one at us, Till the curtain falls down and all's o'er.
Toy Cricket by Samuel Laycock Sing on, there's no but thee and me We'll map the house ring, or else we'll see They sing those little songs of thine As well as to come, and I'll sing mine We'll have a concert here tonight So pipe thy notes out clear and sweet They sing the stave or two for me And then I'll sing a bit for thee That's right, go on, me little guest Thou tries to do thy very best, and I'll do the same. Then thee and me may get our names up yet, thou see. Way the children's listening now at the door. There's crowds about, there is for sure. How pleased they seem, dear little things. I'd sooner sing for them the kings. Mally and Jonas by Samuel Laycock Come, Mally, old woman, it's near forty year Since thee and me first come together We've had money a brief smile, ah, and money a sad tear And experience both good and bad weather As our Elizabeth's gone to look after thy gown And our Tom's rubbing th' mare down in stable What thinks ta, old lass, if we set setting us down And have a nice chat while we're able? Our age is fast whitening our heads one can see, and these shanks were as honest and nimble as they were when held thee the first time on me knee, and they wrapped me up yet with thy thimble. I fancy I often look back to those days when thou lived with thy aunt in Flag Alley. There were nobody, I'm sure, had a prettier face, and I did think some wheel on thee, Mally. How about they some earrings, a reet solid gout, and some side gums a stick in thy hair? And when we walked out, I were lots of times told, thou wert thonsomest lass in all fair. True, since then a great deal of thy charms have gone dead, and thou art now near as lusty and clever. But spite all thy wrinkles and silvery yed, I love thee as dearly as ever. There's one thing I've noticed, old lass, and it's this, that whenever thou's had any trouble, and thou comes and pretended to borrow a kiss, thou always would pay me back double. Now, nah, when ta'en and compared with a woman like thee, what's beauty, position, or riches? But thou seems to be shaping for crying, I see, so get on with mending me breeches. Now drop it, do, Jonas, thou said quite enough. Mon, that worse than they were when we were courting, and at that time they turned out a lot of queer stuff that needed some weeding and sorting. I'm surprised that a grey-headed fellow like thee, still, it's no but thy fun at that poking, and somehow thou never can let me a be when that cowering in corner and smoking. I see that there's one of thy waist buttons gone, and one of thy galluses broken. Thou needn't a gone about this way, mon, if thou'd opened thy mouth and just spoken. I'm expecting our Elizabeth here very soon, and our will's about leaving Jane Tupper. If thou push a few lumps of dry wood under the oven, I'll see about making some supper. As it's Saturday night, we shall want some at nice. I would to relish some tripe for some trotters. As thou knows, lad, we've had some good stuff once or twice, at that shop, the next but one to our potters. If tripe doesn't suit thee when going to bed, I can make thee a mess of good porridge, with some capital meal at our carrier Ned, brought with him for Gregson's at Norwich. But thou mustn't forget that's to wash thee a bit and go down to the shop for some stuff. They want a few beans and some corn for thou tit, and they want some backer and snuff. It's Sunday to morn, oh, I like it to come, for it's best day we have in all seven. A day when one soul can look on twas warm and on earth get a foretaste of heaven. Courting Days by Samuel Laycock Breet days, how soon they pass away, The best days heaven sends to men, 
I wish I weren't so old and grey, I'd caught a bit again. And every spot where Kate and me have often met before, to sit and tell our tales of love, I'd try to say once more. There's the tree I used to clamber up, and yonder's the garden wall, and thou church clock on village green, I think I see em all. I've known forget the chimney note, that old familiar place, where Kate would often sit and look so fondly in me face. Though years have passed since those bright hours, I'm knowing ashamed to tell, I used to go and gather flowers that grew in primrose dell, and these had twine in nut brown hair, a Kate, me darling pet, and then the dear lass would look so fair, I think I see her yet. A kind and thoughtful girl were Kate, and gentle as a dove, who never learned to scorn or hate, her heart were full of love. Her features always wore a smile, and these are mine were the same. I used to cower me down at stile, and whistle till who came. Oft I recall those happy hours, when neath the moonlit sky, two lovers pace yon silent hours, me bonny Kate and I. One lovely night, in month of June, while under Thawthorn tree, I asked her if who'd wed me soon, who smiled and said, I'll see. Just then Giles Bloomfield drove his flock close by that old church tower. We lingered chatting there till clock proclaimed the midnight hour. That neat we named the happy day, and I remember still how in the church I heard us say, Have Robin? Yes, I will. The Court in Neat Part First by Samuel Laycock It's time for me to leave me work and wash and dress myself because to neat at Thedja Dark I meet with Rosy Bell Went leaving last a Sunday night I took her on in mine I said I'd go if all were reap and the weather middling fine We're rare and nicely matched us two that's plain enough to see for nobody could mat more ado than Rosie does a me. We always meet about one place, that side at garden wall, who grins and laughs all o'er her face, I grin and laugh and all. Her mother looked as shy as out the first night I went to the house. I durstn't speak na cough na nout, but cower there like a mouse. I think who seed what visit meant before I come away, for do you know the next time I went, who asked me to meet tay? And now I'm just as welcome there as any lad in town. They always reach me to armchair and tell me to sit me down. Thou chaps a horse worth twenty pound, beside a lot of cows, and a bit of rare good pasture ground where sheep and cattle browse. Now don't I think I'm off that brass, for I wouldn't thank for the spot. With pigs and cows and all he has, Unless I'd her in lot. But yonder Rosie comes, I see, Who's just shut garden gate, And now who's looking out for me, So I mustn't let her wait. The Court in Neat, Part Second By Samuel Laycock I've made it up with Rosie Bell, We both agreed to be wed, But didn't the lass have a crying spell? And didn't her face go red? I asked her nicely if who wished me bed and board to share. Who turned her head inside and blushed and said who didn't care? Now don't I let this secret out, nor mention what I've told. I wouldn't have it talked about for fifty pound in gold. Keep quiet, wait on patiently till the rumour's made a fact, and then I mean to let you see. How I intend to act. You'll know and find me like some fool as soon as weddings o'er. There's such a change, they're now to talk like what they were before. I'll turn me on to any job, keep Johnny out at dirt. I sit bit thob and nurse our Bob whilst Rosie mends me shirt. I never wish to be admired for on broom or clout, 
but when I say the lass getting tired, I mean to help her out. I'll try and save her all I can, and when who's known so well, I'll pull me coat off like a mon, and wash and bait myself. So long as thy stone's clean and white, and fender's nice and bright, I shall always feel it a delight to stop in the house at night. I'll never put Rosie out of tune with daubing parlour floor, but always, when I've dirty shoon, I'll wipe and wheel at door. In winter time, when nights are long, I'll calm me down in nook, and while our souls I'll sing a song, I read from sacred book. You may call it vain, conceited pride, but a chap that canna see nice pictures at his own fireside, well, he's now akin to me. Thank God for all these bonny flowers by Samuel Lacock. Thank God for all these bonny flowers that grow about one's feet, for the silvery moon and the million stars that shine aboon at night, for rain and dew, for sun and shade, and the stormy winds that blow, for rays of hope and snacks of bliss, and drops of grief and all. Thank God for wealth, still more for health, that boon of priceless worth. A blessing more to be desired than the brightest gems on earth. About this, what's power or influence? What's fame or pomp and show? Or life itself? Why, bless your folk, they're just worth naught at all. Thank God for friends, kind hearts and true, at everywhere abound, dispersing sorrow, lightening care, and spreading joy around. For lovely woman, Heaven's best gift, sent down in human form, forever loving, always same, in sunshine or in storm. Thank God for little childer too, those bonny breads o' ours, those olive branches that we love, those cherished garden flowers. Let's thank him for these hungry gifts, and may he send us more, a monarch's blessed with lots of these, can never say he's poor. Life's sweet and too where children are, they keep one's heart in tune. Their gowden links connecting us with the angels up a moon. Besides these life's burdens too, they keep one pockets leet. And if there's only treacle cakes, they inside em out at sea. It's quite a treat to see em all come trailing in at noon. They'll walk o'er every matting house and never wipe the shoon. One youngster's torn his trouser leg, another says he's hurt, a third come plistered up to thin, we're wading through some dirt. I'm wed and wife says who is to, and children bless me so, why we can hardly count em all, we on some noise in toll. Our dick comes in to house and says he's tumbled off a wall, our billy's perched on table top and singing, not for Joe. Thank God we ain't such a spoon of peace, and summat for em to do. We ain't every one a porridge pot, and plenty of porridge too. And though our children need so much, we mostly get enough. We seldom clem for one to make, unless we're short of stuff. Ah well, say some old bachelor, you rue in two, three weeks. What he a gate on do you think, is warm in bed we breathe. To morn he'll have his stockings to mend and air his Sunday clothes. The day after that, mop out his coat and dress his gouty toes. Thank God I'm known a bachelor, about whom an old forlorn. And if I were, I'd choose a mate and go be wed to morn. I would indeed. Another thing, my conscience says I'm right. Now what think you about it, folk? Just wait to her. Good night. 66 by Samuel Laycock Goodbye, old 66, that's well he played as all thy tricks. We ain't seen thy smiles and felt thy kicks, so now we'll say goodbye. That's seen us sick and sad, that's seen us hearty, weal and glad, dancing and singing here like mud, that's no one summon us to cry. Bring in that poor old form, that's standing shivering there in storm, Wilt have a drop of summat warm to cheer thy sixty-six? Come in and sit thee down, it's noon yet time to go, not it. Come warm them shanks of thine a bit, 
and tell us where thou bound. Thou come here when thou art young, and he, how nicely the singers sung, to mat they welcome, the bells were rung, and now thou art bound to go, our friend thou art bound to go. Welcome there summer here to soak, get out a pot and drink it up, drink the new year's health, now do. That's right, now rest thyself, for one can see that none so well. Hast only good old tales to tell? If so, let's have them now. It's latish on in day, it's after eight o'clock, our friend, that getting near the journey's end, that's no one so long to stay. He's fainting, dear, and may bring him some water in a cup. Let's raise his head and let him sup. He's very bad, I say. Give him a tot of wine. We mun go and let him dee till New Year comes to set him free. The church clock's just striking nine. Three hours will see him off, poor thing, he's getting a weary cough. It racks him up, although he's tough, it shouldn't use him so. Thou mun's in pain, I know, he'll no be with us here so long. Then let's strike up a farewell song, and sing it soft and slow. Then leave him to his cell, he's up and summer on his mind, he'd like to try and leave behind. Hush, hush, yonder's thou church bell, bidin' thou dear farewell. Oh, listen, friends, how soft and sweet, and yet how sad it sounds to me. Toll on, toll on, church bell. He's dean now, be still, how thick and short he tacks his breath. He's lying now in thumbs of death, beyond our care and skill. Goodbye, how sixty-six. Thou's played thy pranks and done thy tricks. We're seeing these smiles and felt thy kicks. So now, old year, goodbye.